Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shifkumar and in today's video, I want to talk about the introduction to hyperlinks. Now I'm making this video again because the previous video, uh, some of my operating system was updating and there was just, it wasn't performing, um, my laptop wasn't performing as well as I wanted it to and the video did not come out very well. My audio and the video was not in sync. So I'm redoing this video. And uh, in this particular case, once again, I'm going to introduce you to hyperlinks, uh, which is now bought by uh, or owned by Siemens. And this tool over here that we're working with is uh, primarily designed for things like signal integrity and uh, power and integrity. So uh, this is the software that uh, you can try. Um, and yes, yeah, so let's try to play around what the software can do. So because I've been trying a different simulation tools in order for me to, you know, really see which, uh, which, um, product would help me in simulating, uh, say my PCB design. Uh, so before I even get into the more advanced stuff, I just thought, why don't I just simulate, you know, simple RLC circuits and see what these tools really have to offer the, in the interface, uh, how easy it is for me to, you know, uh, work around with these products and overall the feel and, um, you know, what am I really getting from them? Uh, this, and these are all, uh, highly uh, sophisticated softwares in the sense that they can do a lot of analysis, like, uh, 2d field solving and, and 3d field solvers so that you can understand, you know, how your board will be behaving, uh, when subjected to different conditions and will simulate and tell you, you know, we, whether your layout, uh, it will, would work, uh, um, in, in real life, uh, scenarios. So, uh, so yeah, so before we get there, let's try to, uh, uh, play around with the, uh, hyperlinks, uh, software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click new and in here, I'm going to click a new schematic. And the first thing that I'm going to do is basically, um, create a simple product, a simple uh, source over here. So this. So, um, the way hyperlinks works is, uh, they already have a few lump circuit models. They have, uh, uh, your drivers and then you've got your, uh, transmission lines and this is all, uh, resistors and capacitors, uh, and a few, uh, pull down resistors, pull up resistors and ground. So let's try to create a small little, uh, driver. So I'm going to, I'm going to create this U1 V1. We're going to click on this. Uh, I'm going to double click on this. And let's select a particular, um, a driver. So this works under, um, so what this does is it, it basically has taken a couple of IBIS models. And what an IBIS model is, is basically is, uh, um, a model of an actual component where it tells you what, if you give it a certain input, this would give, this would, be, these are the outputs would give you. So it basically helps the manufacturer share certain information about the components without really showing you, without them really releasing any proprietary information. So these IBIS models are really great for, uh, for consumers or the, or the application engineer to understand before they buy the component, how the component will perform. Uh, and it also helps the manufacturer to sell because, uh, and without really releasing anything that's, uh, proprietary into what, what's the inner workings of it. So it's kind of like a black box system where you, you give it certain inputs and, and would be able to tell you what the outputs are. So what we're going to use is a Vertex 4, which in this particular case, uh, it'll tell you where this is model is coming from. It's a Xilinx processor, uh, and this is the IBIS model. And what we're going to select is, um, is a HSTL to 1.8 volts. And what is HSTL? It's a high speed, uh, stub terminated logic or a series terminated logic, if I'm not mistaken. And this is going to release a uh, generator 1.8 volts. We're going to click OK. And I'm going to make this an output and uh, this should be okay and this is what it turns into so let's try to simulate this so when you see this arrow it basically says that there's an oscilloscope around there um, and that basically means that you can you know probe this uh, particular circuit so i'm going to click this green thing run interface and simulation and show waveform and this opens up this oscilloscope window um, and it's very much like an oscilloscope in the sense, you know, I can change my scaling. I can, you know, increase and decrease the, uh, the vertical position. So it, re it resembles, you know, a kind of a real uh, oscilloscope. So I'm going to click start simulation. And here you can see it generates that 1.8 volt that we wanted it to, uh, 
that that basically the IBIS model was telling us. And it's got a transient, uh, it goes from say zero to one. And let's look at what the rice time is. So when I click on uh, rice time, and before we click on rice time, it, we need to we need to give it some information, basically saying uh, what type of uh, when should we calculate the rice time. So I'm going to click on this arrow over here, and click on options, and I'm looking for the ten percent and ninety percent. Now we call it the ten ninety, which basically means uh, before it reaches say one point eight volt, calculate ten percent of of one point eight volt till ninety percent of one point eight volt, and that will be the rice time that we that we are trying to calculate. And when I click OK, it basically says that the average rise time is 400 picoseconds. So that's what we have over here. So what I'm going to do is I can even, um, you know, create a simple RLC circuit. So I'm going to click, create, say this is the L. Uh, we can create an R. So I'm just going to click on this and then I can drag it. And I can click on this. Then we have your RLL, and then we can put a C circuit. Similarly, just click on that, and then you can drag it. And I can put a load, so I'm going to put another resistor on here. I'm going to basically uh, Yeah, this is a very interesting interface to be honest. Probably a better way to do this. I don't know what the better way is. So I'm just going to click on this and then drag it. So now we have the RLC. And then I'm going to ground this. Similarly, over here, ground this. And also, because I want to have a scope reading over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste this. And instead of this being the output driver, let's make this the input driver. So I'm going to double click on this and click input. And click OK. And I'm going to connect this to, say, the R part. And then, yeah. So now we have an oscilloscope reading over here. We can have an oscilloscope reading over here. So let's change some of these numbers. So let's put this at maybe 50 ohms. So I can double click on that and just say 50. Um, just click OK. I can make this say 0. Point One nanofarad. I can put this as hundred nanofarad. The resistance over here, I can maybe put it at ten ohms. Click OK. And similarly, let's click on this. I don't want to save the previous reading, so I'm going to uncheck this, and I'm going to click Start Simulation. So here we're looking at the uh, U2 result, and it basically is uh, showing zero volts. Uh, so in nine nanoseconds, it's there's no, um, there is nothing happening. So one thing that I might try to do is I believe that the RC time constant is a little um, too uh, too small, or it's not happening. It's not rising in nine, nine nanoseconds. Uh, let me try to. Uh, 
decrease the time. So I'm just going to put this as 100 picofarad. Um, And now you can see it's rising slightly, ever so slightly. So I, if I play around with these with these numbers, uh, um, I should be able to basically, uh, you know, uh, get the RLC circuit working. So it's a pretty uh, handy tool, as you can see. I, you know, if I just reduce this one, maybe, um, maybe basically put this as one nano Henry, just to see how you know the graphs work. Fifty ohms, and then let's simulate again. And here we basically have it. Now to really play around, what you can do is uh, in here you have um, you can select what your what you want in your output. You can also select whether you want the um, uh, whether you want the input to be uh, an edge or you want it to be an oscillator. So we can even change this to an oscillator with say 500 megahertz and duty cycle 50 percent. And then when I click start uh, simulation, you'll see that the input will now start to oscillate. And here we have it. So let's take another example. So what I'm going to do right now, when you get hyperlinks, it does come out with, so when I click on open schematic, I'm not going to change it, save anything because it's a simple RLC circuit. And when you, have a uh, hyperlinks uh, this comes up with some so when you generally when you click on open files uh, you should be basically uh, um, get into this particular folder directory where you got hyperlink 64 and hyperlink files and in here you have something called as SIPI principles and this comes from Eric Bogatin's class actually so if you go into one of his uh, if you go to one of his uh, online academy which is in the Teledyne uh, everywhere you look um, uh, here you have essential principles of signal integrity and advanced and S parameters uh, and all those courses over here, uh, which I am basically taking at this point in time. Uh, if you really look into it, with the hyperlinks, his course material actually ships with it. So it's pretty interesting and I find that very, uh, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty neat actually. So what we can do is take the uh, Bogatin's uh, essential principles, uh, SI, um, integrity single ended transmission line and let's have a look at you know what we can simulate from here so this comes with the product so um, you know you can just access these files and it helps you as i mentioned like this particular software is primarily designed for uh, understanding signal integrity and power integrity so it does make sense that why every example will be catered to applications related to signal integrity and power integrity so as you can see over here he has a couple of um, um, of drivers, he's got a transmission line, and uh, and and uh, and let's simulate and see what's happening in here, and then we'll try to play around with some of these parameters and uh, and just to get a sense of you know what exactly the software can do. You really wouldn't want to use the software to just simulate simple RLC circuits. You want to simulate your actual board. But the first example was just to get an idea of how the software works and just you know play around with it to get a feel of it. Um, 
This is the more uh, practical application of how you would use the software. So, you know, we're just simulating and not really understanding what's really happening in here. So there's a couple of step inputs and that's about it. So let's play around with some parameters to see what's really happening. So in this particular case, I'm going to take this uh, transmission line and let's look at what's there in this particular transmission line in the U3 transmission line six. So what happens when you use this transmission line? There's generally two things that uh, characterize the transmission line. One is the characteristic impedance. Uh, that is basically what does what is the instantaneous signal the uh, instantaneous impedance the signal sees uh, when it's traveling through that transmission line and if it's a uniform transmission line you should see one one it should see one instantaneous impedance and that instantaneous impedance is characterized as a characteristic impedance so that's what you have over here z0 is the characteristic impedance of a transmission line which you could play around with it and the second aspect of a transmission line is the delay which basically means how long will electricity flow through or the signal will take flow through that transmission line and and electricity travels at the speed of light because it is it is uh, it is it is light um they both are part of the electromagnetic spectrum um and that's what you're really calculating so you're basically saying if i have a transmission line of 50 ohms and a delay of say one nanosecond uh and this could be and these are the, basically the two parameters that could have that you could change in a simple transmission line so what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to, you know, play around with this. Let's put this at 60. Let the transmission line be one nanosecond. And instead of 50 ohms, uh, let's change this to say uh, 100, 100,000 ohms. So now there is a change in impedance. So let's see what we can expect. So let's model our uh, U3 and R22. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this again. I am going to unhide the rest. So we got U3 and R22. I am going to click uh, undo the previous results and let's click start simulation. So in nine nanoseconds, you'll see these weird waveforms. Now what's really happening in here? Let's make it more realistic actually. So a transmission line of 1.054 nanosecond is really, really slow. So let's make this a little smaller. Let's make this 0.1 nanosecond. So that means the delay for the signal to basically go from, from one end of the transmission line to the other end of the transmission line is gonna be 0.1 nanoseconds. Uh, and now let's look at the uh, let's now let's uh, simulate this and see what 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 changes uh, we could see. So now basically the signal would uh, would bounce much faster. So now it's taking nine nine, nine nanoseconds. Uh, we should be able to see it, you know, ringing at a much more uh, uh, much more faster or you know in a smaller time frame. Let's that's at least that's my prediction. Let's see what what we see. And there we go. And because once the transmission line is shorter, the ringing will also uh, die down, uh, will also should be able to be shorter because it's bouncing in a, at a much smaller distance. And that's really what signal integrity is all about. Like if I change one particular parameter, I should be able to um, basically see how the signal is responding. So what we can also do right now is what if we make this into an oscillator and uh, let's say this is gonna be 200 megahertz. And let's change the duty cycle to 50% and let's click start simulation. And this would simulate an actual clock. So, or, or, or you could also, this could also simulate, you know, you having a general purpose input output pin going high and going low. Uh, it could also simulate, you know, your I square C bus, your SPI bus. Um, and you might, you know, see this type of behavior. And let's have a look at why is this ringing on the high level, 
little different than the ringing in the lower level. Uh, it's the same clock signal, at least visually, right? Uh, if you have seen my previous video about bandwidth, we'll realize that it all depends on the rising edge and falling edge. So let's look at if they are the same, because if they, because this tells me that the rising edge is a little different from the falling edge. So let's have a look over here. So let me calculate the rising edge. So I can click over here and click the rising edge. Now it gives me an error because I'm not selected the waveform. So I'm going to basically select U3. And, and then let's look at what the rising edge is. Uh, is this 1090? 10%, 90%. And it says the rising edge is around 283, 274 picoseconds. Now let's look at the falling edge. Let's make me sure, let's make sure that the falling edge is also calculated with 10% and 90%. We call it a 1090. And now let's look at the falling, um, falling, the average fall time. And the average fall time is 251.5. That means it's smaller. That means it's falling faster. And this should give you an indication that the rising edge is a little different from the falling edge. And that is the reason why we have more ringing in the down because the smaller the falling edge, uh, the, the falling edge, uh, the more ringing. And ringing or, or, or reflection is very related and correlated with uh, your rise and fall time. So this a tool is, uh, is really designed for you know, signal integrity and power integrity. Uh, that's right. reason why you have a lump circuit model in terms of a transmission line. You'll find that even with the key set and ADS. Uh, you won't find that in something like LT Spice because that's not necessarily dealing with signal integrity. It's dealing with more high level uh, lump circuit models. So yeah, I think this is also another tool that I might explore in order for me to simulate you know, my PCB and see how I can better improve my designs. I hope you like this video. Uh, you can check this just software out. Uh, my name is Anthony and once again, subscribe to the video. If you like videos like this, like the video uh, and until next time, stay safe.